Hi everybody, welcome to our Monday Night Live. I'm Mel. And I'm Janelle. And, and this, this is Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> and we've told her that she needs to face that way because... That's said, the camera. That's a camera and they're the most smiliest oh, dogs. Exactly. And they always tend, all the dogs tend to face us when the camera starts. But there we go. Oh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> she's so cute. I can't get over how cute she is. <laughs> So thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. So tonight we are going to talk about de-shedding your dog, whether it's a corgi, um, like a Siberian Husky. Mm -hmm. What other types of breeds? Um, oh, God, we're putting it on the spot. Maybe German Shepherd. Yep. Um, Spitz breeds. Yeah, any of those that have that double, the double coat. Yeah, because it is shedding season. So there is hair literally <laughs> flying around everywhere, everywhere. We're just talking about us wearing black. We're always in black and yeah. now, now we're covered in hair. I should have wore Sam. A lot of colour. Yeah, color. Of color. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sammy. Hi, Sammy. How are you going? <laughs> and you got a hi too, Daisy. <laughs> That's right. So let's get straight into it. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the importance of dog shedding and why they shed because mm. I feel like if people understand the coat and why they shed and the times of year that mm -hmm. they're shedding, then they can prepare. Yeah, that's Do you right. Feel like can, that? Yeah, they can get ready for the season, the shedding seasons to start. And yeah. And book in, either do it at home or book in with your groomer in advance um, just so that you're ready. Mm -hmm, definitely. Yeah. And she's already not my notes. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> so let's quickly talk about that their coat is made to protect their skin. So their skin is their largest organ on their body. So this is so important. And the reason it's important is because we need to understand the coat and what it's used for mm -hmm. and then go from there so and I find that especially new groomers um it is can get it a little a, bit complicated yeah, it, it at times it takes a bit of like researching and understanding once you once you understand it though you can really understand what you need to do to groom yeah the dog correctly yeah and what coat you are taking out because mm -hmm. at the moment like looking at her and looking at the hair that's coming out of her is mm. you would be looking at it yeah and going oh okay so i'll just brush that and hope for the best type mm -hmm. thing yeah but as a groomer, we don't hope for the best. We want to maximise the amount of time the dog is on the table and really... Um, Getting through that coat and making sure that there's not as much coat dropping yeah. everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So let's quickly talk about why dogs shed. So dogs shed their coat because they need to regulate their body temperature. So this can be in the summer months. Mm-hmm as well as the cooler months. Yeah, so, a lot of people don't realise that, that they do shed in the cooler months. No, they don't. And so what actually happens is, and it's logic when mm -hmm. you think about it, so coming now mm -hmm. for us in Australia, so anyone watching overseas. overseas, in Australia we're coming up to those warmer months and we're in spring at the moment. So everything is preparing mm -hmm. For the warmth and the heat and things like that so what dogs do of course is then start to shed coat to start lightening the load yep from the winter yeah that's right to get rid of that winter the woolly winter coat yeah to help the the skin breathe yeah the skin breathe and um and then because also during those warmer months the coat also then needs to start to then think about those cooler months that are coming ahead mm -hmm. so this is what we call a coat drop you would say yeah. that coat drop yeah yeah, yeah. Yep. so it's referred to as a coat drop um, and I think she's going through a coat drop, isn't she, Laurel? Her mum's just there. <laughs> because there is a lot of hair everywhere. And um, so what actually then happens, so once we get through that summer period, their coat actually has another drop because it's getting rid of the summer coat and then it's growing that really warm winter coat. So it's a constant cycle of hair 
that is happening. So they don't just shed mm-hmm. once a year yeah. in the spring. Yeah. They also <laughs> got to prepare for the winter. For the winter. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty... It, it's, it's an a, all year... Re- it's a, yeah. a, a 12 month thing, isn't it? <laughs> it is, it is, it is. And when you begin to understand that, then you can then start to think about when your dog actually needs to be groomed, depending on what part of Australia you live in mm-hmm. as well. The cooler parts might your dog might have a later drop. Yeah, it might so hold maybe on to that coat December, for a bit longer. January mm-hmm. things. So now we've covered the coat drop. So let's have a quick look at her coat. So her coat, this outer coat, this rough coat, this coat is protecting her undercoat, which is then providing the insulation she needs for the winter and the summer months. So this coat is actually called the primary coat. So this is her main coat, so primary, that makes sense. (laughs) And in between her primary and her secondary, her secondary coat is that thick undercoat. So I find this is what sheds the most. Yes, definitely. And then in between that, we also have the intermediate hairs and they're... They're more more of a moderate hair, but they still provide the thermal insulation. Uh, but they they're a little bit different made up, so we can go through that a, another time. But they actually help protect the secondary and the primary hairs as well. So they all work together in protecting your dog's skin mm-hmm. and help, of course, regulate the body temperature. So we've got the three different types of hair and then we go into so this can be a little bit complex but Mm -hmm. you can rewatch it as well yeah yeah so we need to go through our different stages of coat growth as well of hair growth so our anagen stage our healthy hair is full of blood so this is that shiny hair that we see on daisy at the moment that Mm. in that um primary hair it's really shiny it's beautiful and shiny isn't it yeah so this is our healthy hair so this is a hair that we would never ever remove like it's healthy it's providing um coverage Mm -hmm. and it's doing a really great job so then we start to go through hairs the catagen stage and this is a hair that then starts to release from the um the follicle so it's detaching from the bulb and it's starting to release and then we've got the telogen and that's a hair follicle that is completely loose so all these little yeah the hairs, little hair the fly wires that yep, come out <laughs> that's the hair that it. is yeah that's ready to come out so even if you don't remember what those stages are called There's just three stages that we need to look out for, going from healthy hair that is super shiny, then going from our dull hair that's ready to be removed. And then if we look a little bit closer into her coat as well, you can actually see the little bits of dull Mm -hmm. hair that... In there. Yeah, that just comes comes out, out. doesn't it? Yeah, because I feel like sometimes even like the undercoat can be shiny yeah it it still has that nice shine to it yeah and it still can be yeah healthy growing undercoat it just needs you know it's that dull stuff that is the stuff that needs to come out yeah definitely so let's talk about tools now we've gone through a quick Oh, hey, Nancy from sunny Perth. It's not sunny here. (laughs) Uh, So let's just talk about um, tools. Now we know which hairs we need to remove. So we Mm -hmm. need to remove those flyaways, those dead dull bits of hair. We're not going to remove any of this outer coat because it's nice and shiny and it's doing its job. So we'll quickly talk about the tools. I love the undercoat yeah, rake. I think that's definitely the number one tool that all of us go for yeah. with these guys. And these tools come in all different, um, lots of companies make them. Yeah, shapes, sizes, lengths. Um, yeah, so this one, the teeth, teeth, mm-hmm. a, a little bit shorter. So we might use this on a dog that has a shorter coat. Um, I'd say corgis have more of a medium, so mm-hmm. I would go more of a medium yep. length. I like this one. Yeah. Um, this is a medium length as well. With and some, some of the teeth rotate and some don't. Yeah. 
And um, I like them rotating. Yeah, I do. I think it goes through the hair. Yeah, your hair, hair in my in their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this one here, it's obviously a lot longer with in the teeth, and that's going to be for your um, longer coat yeah. coated dog. What would you say, like Malamute or? Yeah, Malamute. Um, maybe like Saint Bernard. Type. Yeah, Saint Bernard. Long. I wouldn't go as long as you, nah. your Samoids and stuff, but nah. definitely the, that next length up. Yeah, but I like um, I like the ones, the teeth that move a little bit because they give a little bit more flexibility. Mm -hmm. And I like that because then when I'm removing the coat that it's not just dragging through and pulling out the healthy the hair. The healthy hair, that yeah. Is, that it yeah. glides through the coat a bit better. Yeah, and you need to trust your dog's coat is going to do the right thing. So mm -hmm. um, know that it's ta if it's if it stops removing the hair, then you're probably yeah. at the right stage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do stages. you find male and female corgis coats are different? Oh, that's a good question for Laurel. Yeah, it is a good question do you for think Laurel. They're different? No. no. The breed of says no. Yeah. <laughs> Daisy's mum says no. Yeah. I think when um, maybe if they're going if through they're going a through a season or a, um, if there's if for the male dogs if there's girls going through seasons as well sometimes that but if it's yeah age yeah yeah but generally no. My corgi is definitely ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to read this out though, that's it. I can't see the question. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Can you please put out the links for the canes? And yes, definitely. So yeah. we'll, um, we'll add the links to yeah, this I'll one's... I'll actually pop it in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on the tonight YouTube. Tonight or tomorrow. YouTube and the Facebook yeah. page. So we've looked at our undercoat rakes uh, and let's quickly go through with our slicker. Mm -hmm. I prefer a slicker that is a little bit, um, that's got a bit more hard, a bit stronger, it's firmer. In its t yeah, yeah, um, in its cushion. In yeah. It's a bit, a bit firmer in the cushion. Yeah, which I prefer. So if you've got a dog that has hair just clumps mm. coming out, definitely. Yeah, do your slicker first. Yeah, because it's really going to remove a lot of coat. But then, of course, with a slicker, and especially I always say this with these slickers, that you do need to be super careful and not go over the same area mm -hmm. too much. So if you do have a dog that has heavy shedding going on in the pants, you just really need to be careful as you're going through yeah. that area. Yeah. Um, combs. So our combs, I love this comb. I oh know, it's my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> it's got wide teeth. It's quite long. It's got quite long teeth on it and they're nice and wide apart. They're actually a really good length apart, especially yeah. for these guys. Um, it gets right down into right down into the coat. Yeah. Which is nice and healthy. Yeah. And then I would, if coat. you don't have something like that, you could just go for your every... Standard. Yeah. If there's lots of groomers watching, like, who doesn't have one of these? Yeah, I, know. I think, <laughs> I think we I've all got do. like yeah. 10 of them. Yeah. <laughs> blue and purple. <laughs> it's about the same yeah. blue and purple. That's a standard colour. So anything where the teeth are a little bit further apart um, is really great. And the reason I prefer that is over a, a finer tooth because the finer tooth might pull out the wrong mm, hair yeah. and we need to be really really particular in the hair that we're taking out and trust that the coat's doing the right mm -hmm. thing yeah it could get stuck in the coat and then you're pulling it you're pulling the yeah and definitely. you're irritating as well um, nice. good girl so talk about the talk about the coat coking yeah so i we were just discussing these off air and i quite like them and I think they have a purpose and the same as our um, de-shedding, like our, our smaller de-shedder mm -hmm. as well. They have a, oh, you like that? This one? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, they do have a purpose and this is why I always go through the how dogs shed and why they shed and the different stages of coat growth mm -hmm. and all that because 
With these, they can be quite aggressive, but especially this one, that we need to really learn how to use them properly and not just all of a sudden pull it down the back really, really fast. So it is a really, really great idea. Um, Janelle will be able to show yep. that if you do have heavy shedding area that you do it might come on that side and do that way they might get a little bit of a separate the coat and it's just a gentle motion so we're not going through really rough or anything like that we're checking what hair we're removing as we're going through the coat yeah you can see it's hard but you can see that's quite dull lifeless coat that it's taking out but we would never just continuously run this through would we no because no. you just i would use it in particular areas that i'm trying to move coat or manipulate um we were just talking off air about like you can use them on you can use them lines, yeah because um, some dogs will bulk reduce they'll have these fly wires that come out and off the off their back and you can use them to start controlling where that coat's Heaviest. Heaviest, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so when we do use those type of tools, and we will talk more about them the more lives and the more tutorials we do, that they do have a place in the grooming um, toolbox, mm -hmm. but we are really particular in how we use them. And, um, yeah. Let's go back to our undercoat rack. Yeah, we love the undercoat yeah. rack. <laughs> it tends to be pulling out the what coat needs to come yeah so if we get miss daisy to stand up there she goes she's Good had girl. a big few days so always starting underneath our coat and working through bit by bit so even though and it might be a few of you out there that have watched our tutorials with curly coats um mm -hmm. with our um moodles our bichons our poodles things like that it's still the same process, so we still more or less line brush through, oh, sorry, <laughs> through that coat. So section at a time. And again, why is that important? Because when we're going through that coat that we're pulling out and removing the correct coat and we're not pulling out this healthy coat and we're removing that new coat, so then that, oh, sorry, that old coat, so then that new coat, coat can yeah. then start to come through. So Miss Daisy can be all ready for the um, the summer months. <laughs> Does she like to swim? No, no she's not a swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> Good girl. That's all. Any so, quick? Yeah, go yeah. on. Sorry. If, <laughs> if you're, I'll just continue yeah. brushing. I'm enjoying brushing it at the moment. <laughs> if um. If your dog doesn't particularly like standing for the groom, a good idea is to start with something like a rake or even a pin brush. Or even a pin brush. Good girl. Use a pin brush. On the shorter coats with the pin brush, you probably wouldn't have to separate as as much. But when you get into the more heavy, heavy areas, areas yeah. you'd want to separate that coat and just take it a line at a time. Good girl. They have the best. They have the best booty, don't they? They do. <laughs> they do. It's always so good. I love it. So if you do have a dog that um, is new to brushing and they, they're they not a fan of it, and some dogs just aren't, it is a good idea to start with more of a gentle technique and a, a gentle brush than coming straight in with something that might look and feel a little bit odd. Um, and intimidating. Yeah, and I always like to show them. So she's like, oh, no, I prefer that on my back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She loves it, doesn't she? Yeah. You'll notice that, a, you know, particularly this type of coat, they will have thicker areas, don't they? Yeah. They have quite thick around their, around their back legs or their thighs, around their necks and around their shoulders. Yeah. 
So we're struggling to get the questions yeah, up coming if anyone's up. got any questions. So I'll answer them once we're finished for sure. So if Janelle's still going through with our Under shed, her shedder and our comb. So you can you, see how shiny the coat's starting to become too. Yeah. And there's little tufts coming out as well. And I, I'm a sprayer. So <laughs> I like to spray. It's always a so, good idea. Yeah, it is a good idea to use a hydrating coat conditioning spray when you are de-shedding because it does also help and um, protect those healthy yeah. hairs through the coat. Um, because what can happen is, especially if you've got a dog that um, is a little bit dirty as well, but mm -hmm. she's not, she's very clean. Yeah, she's so clean. <laughs> she's been at a few shows this weekend. Uh, yeah, so if you've got a dog that, um, you know, has been running around the garden and you've seen, you know, you're sitting in the garden and you've thought, oh, okay, I'm going to start to brush my dog. It is a really good idea to use a coat conditioning spray that's going to hydrate that coat and help remove the dead hairs or any prickles, any burrs, any grass seeds, because it will help create slip, which is hydration in the coat mm -hmm. as well. And nice shine. And God, there's so much hair. I know, it just <laughs> keeps coming, doesn't it? Beautiful coat. So if we could just show her little bum and mm -hmm. then we'll be able to see the shine that's created. And some people just don't down. realize either that um, healthy coat is shiny coat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when I used to groom full time, we used to get a lot of people saying, oh my God, the coat is so shiny yeah. now. <laughs> and it is because we're removing that dead, dull coat that has no purpose that just sits in there. So even if you are coming up to the um, the winter months and you think, oh no, my dog stays outside, uh, I, I need to yeah. keep that coat in. Yeah, you do, but you also need to remove the dead hairs that are just staying in the coat because what's going to happen is when the new winter coat starts to go through, it actually can get caught up in the dead hair and it won't actually come it through. It won't come. Yeah, yeah. does it? So yep. even um, double-coated breeds mm -hmm. can still get matted bits and Definitely. clumps. Yeah, in them as well. So it is super, super important to really um, make sure you're removing it on those two coat drops. And I find if the comb or your um, your de shedding rake isn't going through smoothly, that's when I like to spray again. Do you do the same? Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I just did then. <laughs> yeah with the moving teeth yeah i like the moving teeth stephanie like um because i feel like they're not just dragging through um and removing the wrong hair if i need more of a heavier de shedder that's when i'll move to yeah. the um to coking this, or yeah. the, i don't know if we call it a coking but it's... yeah um, and that's when you've really got to make sure you um, are watching the coat when you're um, when using, you're using one of these. It. Because yeah. we don't want to remove those healthy hairs because then it can really disrupt the skin and the um, hair follicles. And like the coat growth. Yeah. So if you're removing the wrong coat, you're not you're gonna you're not going to promote the, the good healthy coat to come, are you? No, You're no. It. And these are all little things that um, if you have a lot of clients that have um, dogs that shed, because sometimes all of a sudden you might just get... <laughs> it's kind of like with, in those seasons, isn't it? Yeah. Everyone's starting to come. Yeah. Close up of the brushes. You yeah. can have a close up of the brushes. I'll just get all of <laughs> Daisy's hair out. So that is the. That's the Artero D Shedder. 
and then we've got um that's a pin brush the that's pin a long brush. tooth pin brush so i prefer the long tooth because again when we're doing dogs that and it makes total sense and i remember the day when i realized this i was like oh my god yeah. <laughs> um and when i first started grooming that the longer the pin or the longer yeah. the, the teeth the yeah. more it goes through the coat yeah makes sense <laughs> i love that length and that one and then you've got your slicker brushes mm -hmm. the slicker brush slicker brush your combs which is all different types we've done one on grooming equipment um, if you wanted to check that one out, yeah. that has all the different types of equipment that groomers would use. And that is your de-shedding tool. Yeah. How do you know when to stop? Well, I stop when there's minimal coat coming yeah, out. Yeah, when the, when the dull hair starts to slow down. And it'll be rare that there's no undercoat. Yeah. Yeah. So there'll always be undercoat in the dog no matter what. If yeah. there's no undercoat, I feel like there's something going on and yeah. um, you've either taken out too much. Or, yeah, um, like these dogs should have undercoat there. So yeah. you, don't rem you don't want to remove all the undercoat. The only undercoat that you're wanting to remove is the dead, dull stuff ready to be removed. Be removed. Yeah, and this is a good example. So if we switch her around this mm -hmm. way. Good girl. This way? Yeah, because she must have been sitting on a Yeah, building. she was. <laughs> so I haven't done that side. But yeah, good. so it is quite... Um, good girl heavy in this area so I would always again start at the bottom even though there's nothing to be removed here and work my way through instead of going oh okay it's stuck yeah. here yeah. I always have method behind mm -hmm. the process yeah. and you've got to sort of trust the process as well so just gently going through and if you're fine there is too much coat in there and it's not coming out. This is when I would pick up my slicker, slicker brush. Yeah, yep. do you do Thank the same. You. Yep. Yeah, and then just gently go through the coat. And you can see all the hair. I wish my corgi only was shedding that little. That little. <laughs> <laughs> Mine sheds absolutely heaps. And washing and de shedding hair two days. <laughs> yeah. Two day time. Yeah, we'll do a bathing one yeah. soon as well um, because a bathing process can really help, help remove the hair as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as soon as that warm water gets on that hair follicle, yeah. it can help release, release it. that middle stage mm -hmm. of hair growth. So, and we can see that the cone's actually not going through either. So, this is quite a heavy um, part of the coat. So I've got a again. question there, do, sorry, what was that one? Um, do you recommend de-shedding before the bath or is it better to de-shed them after the bath? Um, depending if they need yeah. a bath. It, yeah, that's right. If they're, if mm. they're, like, I mean, some people are at home de-shedding their own dog, so they'll just de-shed it. You can do yeah. it either either. I find that um, sometimes the bath will help, as Mel just said, release that middle stage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can definitely de shed before. Yeah, and um, yeah, like I said before, de shedding in the bath can be like a huge. Um, it Help. can be a brush on its own. Yeah. So if you do yeah. have a dog that is going through a major, major coat drop, it can be the best thing just to help release yeah. it, clean the 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 skin. Yep. Um. Yeah. I uh, had a groomer cut my corgi out of coat. Will it grow back? No, it'll definitely grow back, Cindy. Um, it'll just take a little bit longer because the primary hair is the harshest hair. Um, but what you'll need to do is, so even though um, it's been cut, you still need to de-shed and remove and get that coat... Um, 
Working again. Yeah, coming those through stages probably. coming through Ooh, again. Good girl. Are you right, Dal? <laughs> she like tapped over the space. Yeah. We'll put all the. I've just seen a couple of comments in regards to the names of the products. We'll put a link oh, there. Oh, thanks, Kelly. So, um, so you'll be able to follow it and go shopping. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, because tools have come a long way as well, mm. and products have come a long way, and understanding coats and the and way... I remember we just used to use slicker brush and comb and that yeah. was it. <laughs> that was pretty hard. That was, it was hardcore, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> so, and it's a good idea that I'll quickly go through as well that we forgot to go through before we head off is supporting the dog's mm -hmm. skin mm -hmm. and the dog's coat as we're going through. So instead of going in and just willy-nilly brushing it's a good idea to really support with the hand that we're not using or not brushing mm -hmm. with and then good just girl. she likes it she wants to sit down yeah. with it good um, girl. just to gently go through and help support and just keep that skin nice and tight, and tight because yeah. if we hit a little bit of an undercoat that might be a little bit tangled. It might actually um, pull the skin yeah, with be it. Yeah, be uncomfortable. Good girl. She's a good girl. So as I go through the coat, I'm really supporting those areas that I'm brushing, and it actually lets her know where I'm brushing. So mm -hmm. instead of just coming in with the shatter at the top if I come in with my hand first and give her a nice pat and then move her head nice and straight and then come through it actually communicates to her that this is the area that we're brushing and that we're going to be working on and I feel she that, did it like you, yeah. you saw it, like she'd flicked her head around as soon as she you put the brush there but then after you patted it she was quite happy yeah. to let that happen yeah so it is a good habit to get into with dogs mm -hmm. if you are even going to do something with the ear you know that you touch the ear first and then go through so it's just allowing the dog time to adjust that that's what's happening so was there any other questions is everybody watching with their corgis um what is that spray? Oh, what's the spray so this is the refresh coat conditioning spray so that has lemon myrtle citrus and avocado oil so the avocado oil is to hydrate the coat and to help put moisture back into that coat which is great if you've got a corgi because they're low riders. Oh, yeah. <laughs> low riders, I love that. <laughs> they are, corgi hair. With yeah. it. It's Daisy. Good girl. We've got any more questions? So you could seriously comb a corgi forever, mm -hmm. I feel. Corgi and pugs. Look at it. <laughs> you can see how dull that coat is. I'll try and get it. Uh, it's hard to so see. Maybe on this one. Oh, yep. It's actually a lot. It's lost its colour, <laughs> so <laughs> it's ready to come out. Um, we'll just go through with the tail because the tail's a good one. Mm -hmm. okay. And supporting the tail. So coming through, and I always like to hold the tail yeah. as well. And again, yeah. it communicates to the dog this is what's happening. And I'll go through with the slicker first and going with the direction of the coat lay. And this is important for the entire body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not going up again. We're not brushing against the... No, I'm not coming yeah. up against because this would pull and actually feel quite uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Who wants to do that? I know. <laughs> it does look uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. And then just coming through. And if you do feel like there's... Oh, see what... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more hair to sort of come out you can just pay more attention to those particular areas but again just be very gentle and be considerate that it is a tail it's a good girl yes good girl darling good girl yeah okay guys so was there any other questions
I think we might have just had one pop up just then and just to see. I've learned quite a bit. It will definitely help with grooming the corgis. Yeah, perfect. So if there's anything that you've forgotten, um, definitely pop it in the yeah, comments. Yeah, reach out to us and we can answer your question, any questions that you got really. Yeah, definitely. Um, we could brush her all, stand here and brush her all night. <laughs> okay, so our next week's... Oh, so we're not doing a live next no, week? No, so next week will be a video that yep. I've already filmed. Mm -hmm. So it is my toy poodle that was in an Asian fusion trim mm -hmm. and now she's back to a poodle. I know. <laughs> she's living her poodle life again, she, isn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's definitely being her own poodle. So that is something that um, you guys won't want to miss because it is quite a big... Um, Transformation, trans yeah. yeah. it's huge so um we'll pop that up on the monday night as yeah, well at the same time we'll do that at seven o'clock on yeah. monday um just so we keep in same yeah. and you can sit and the reason for that is is because i'm heading off to the uk to the world grooming conference mm -hmm. to speak there i know well <laughs> i'm already tired thinking about it but um, i can't wait to see all my uk buddies and to see colin and, i know isn't that exciting yeah, and to see rich and, yeah yeah i'm pretty excited so, but we will be back on our lives. I think it's on the 28th of mm -hmm. November. And on the 28th, we will have Zach Douglas. Yes. So, it. Zach is amazing. He's a mobile groomer. And I always find it amazing that he, um, he has no branding. No, I know. No, and his books are chockers. So, I can't wait to hear how he does it. And he's going to give us his top tips on grooming a cavalier he's mm -hmm. always had cavaliers yeah so we're really looking forward to that so definitely tune in i think it is on the 28th of november we'll keep we'll definitely let you know exactly what dates yeah um everything so coming buckle up. in i know <laughs> buckle up. it's a lot of fun <laughs> yeah okay guys so thank you so much for joining us and thank you miss daisy do you want to turn around yeah. <laughs> and thank you laurel yeah thanks laurel <laughs> <laughs> and um we will see you next week and we will see you live in um, a few weeks. A few weeks. But thank you so much for joining us and definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel and ding the bell. To yeah, get ding your the bell. Notifications mm. for when we're definitely live. Okay, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. See you.